All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You know, this is my third time in Nepal coming and speaking to a, in, uh, in a conference. And I'm, I'm finding this crowd less motivated. I don't know, maybe due to rain? Did you like that? How many of you like early morning rain? Because all of us like evening rain, but how about early morning rain? Do you like that? Yes. No? Okay, yes? yes. You want to sleep that time? Okay. Good. How about office? What's that? Oh, okay, like. So there's a condition, if it's rain, on Saturday, enjoy it, right? Okay, okay, all right. Well, uh, good morning everyone once again. My name is Dhananjay Kumar, and uh, I'm going to talk about a topic, change detection in Angular. And if you might have, uh, if you focused on Stephen talk, he very explicitly mentioned that uh, uh, people talk about like change detection in Angular 2, change detection in Angular 4, change detection in Angular 8, and all those various versions. But actually, there's fundament, there are some fundamental concept of Angular which remains same across the framework. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set up an expectation for next half an hour. This topic is for half an hour. I'll go very step by step and try to explain you the basic of change detection. And of course, if you want deeper discussion on that, I'll be here whole day and, uh, and we can do a conversation around that. So if you are already working on change detection, if you have a couple of questions, uh, I would be happy to take that offline. But here let's focus on keeping everyone in mind that they should understand what is change detection. Okay? Uh, before I uh, move ahead, my name is Dhananjay Kumar and uh, I, and this is a book I wrote on Angular, Angular Essential. Uh, four of you might get this book today in raffle. Uh, I don't know how they would raffle it, but, uh, but uh, this book is uh, actually very essential book. This book does not contain any platform uh, version specific code. It's version agnostic book. And if you are starting with Angular, this book uh, may help you. Uh, if you have any query, you can uh, email me at debugmode at outlook.com and keep tweeting me on Twitter with hashtag ng, uh, ng Nepal. Uh, whoever tweets more will notice them and of course they are going to get it more, okay? Uh, so what is change detection? Before I go to these slides, okay, let's, let's focus, on the, uh, focus on something. How many of you have written even a single, co single application in Angular? Like ng new, you have done that? Everyone done that? And through ng new, the first thing you do is that you go and put an interpolation to display the data. Yes, everyone? Now I have here one uh, application, and you, uh, and you see that uh, this application, what it does, it is, a counter is increasing, right? If I go and uh, uh, refresh this, it will start from zero, and then one, and then two, and then three, and then four, right? Who is doing this task for you? If you are not coming from, uh, if you, like we are not refreshing the page, we are not clicking anywhere that hey, update value or something like that. So there is someone who is doing this task for you. Right? This is a very simple application, a simple Angular application. It has only one counter. And I have put some logic to increase that counter each second. Now that counter is being increased in the data side. So if I come here and show you code, And here's the code for that. And let's go very step by step. Okay. I hope I'm making sense, sir. I'm trying to show you that the value which is getting, getting increased each second, it's not, it's, there's something behind that, right? So this is the code. Okay, is it visible or should I go for the dark mode? Dark mode is better? And how we do that? 
Yeah, I guess five, right? Now I can see my screen. I was not able to see my screen there. It's tough to look at there. And now I'll go dark Visual Studio. Is better? OK. So you see that if in my code, uh, in line number, line number, uh, so here you see that I have taken a count equal to 0. OK, everyone? And then what I'm doing, I'm just increasing that count each second. There's no fancy code there. And then I'm displaying that right here. And there's nothing else here. And when we run this code, it is getting increased, uh, like the counter value is getting updated. So there are two things involved here, your HTML file and your uh, TypeScript file. There's someone who is making sure that data in your TypeScript file, we call it data model, and your HTML, we call it template, are in sync with each other. And they are doing their task their own. You are not doing anything. And that person is called change detector. So what change detector does actually, it, it makes sure that your data model and your DOM is in sync with each other. OK, so you have a data model. Data model means that data is a model. You create an object or product, that is a model. You create object of supplier, that is a model. You create those objects on your TypeScript file. And then you display them, you work with them on your HTML. Both should be in sync with each other, and that job is done by change detector. So here is your data model, here is your DOM. Whenever there is a changes in the data model, it makes sure that uh, DOM is also updated. Like here you have a data model like this, something like this dot product, new product to hammer, and you display that in the template like that. Everyone do that? And you should get some output like this? On the top, like two hammer and whatever is the value? So who does this task? Now what happens is that I went there and I uh, modify the value. Oh, I forget to modify. But let us say you go there and modify the value in the product. Again, you should get the updated, uh, updated data there. And who does that task? That who makes you sure that whatever the value of your data model, data model means object in TypeScript, is rendered and is in sync with the data model on your DOM. The person who does this task is called change detector. OK? It's a magical. There's someone who does that for you. You have no idea. Like, it's really magical. If you don't understand my friend, if you go there and look at this code, See, it's, it's going on. Someone is going, reading the value of counter, and then updating on the DOM as well. So it's magical. And why it is magical, I tell you, and why it is powerful, that everyone understands what is data binding. So data binding allows to sync between your data and all. And recently, I was just showing that, hey, can I write a two-way data binding in plain JavaScript? And just to write a two-way data binding in plain JavaScript, I wrote, a, I wrote a blog post here. And if you look at here, for a very simple two-way data binding, you at least need these many lines of code. And this is just one use case. And you got to understand all objects and everything of JavaScript. These many lines of codes are required. And there you are just focusing on your business need. Your business need is that each second that value should get updated. And you have put that code, and someone is taking care of that. And that is, that's why it's magical. And that someone is called change detector. So everyone clear what is change detector? It makes sure that your data model and your DOM are in sync with each other. Perfect. Uh, then I have a slide which I uh, quickly uh, move ahead. So the magician is Angular Change Detector. And what change detection does, it makes sure that your component, uh, and your component and DOM is in sync. Now, here's something which I quickly cover and go on the next slide. If you don't understand, it's perfectly fine. Every component class in Angular is represented by a view. It's not that view, it's not that template. I'm not talking about that template where you uh, put uh, curly braces and all that, button and all. View is another class. 
So every DOM, every component class is actually represented by a view and they are into one-to-one -one relationship with each other. So if you have a button element on your HTML, uh, on your component template, there is a button node on the view. Make sense? And what happens is that uh, components are internally uh, represented as view. For each element in the DOM, there is a node in the view. And view holds the reference of the associated component class. So each view class has a reference of the component class. OK? So actually, change detector does not run on your component. It runs on your view. And to, to see that, you can use a change detector by injecting like this. You can go to a component class and change detector ref is the, is the class which makes sure that your change detector is running. You can, you can uh, inject that in your component like this, okay? And if you go and debug your code in the browser, you'll find something like this. Now everyone understands this basic uh, object-oriented concept that if I have a base class, if I have a child class, I can do base class b equal to new child class. Everyone agree with that? Normal object-oriented feature. If you have an interface called iBase, and if you implement that interface in a child class, you can do iBase b equal to new child. That's the whole concept of dependency injection. Everyone agree? So here, whenever you inject CD, whenever you request Angular that, hey, gives me, hey give me a reference of change detector ref, actually Angular resolve it and gives you reference of uh, view ref. Just put a debugger and you can see that. And why that happens, that if you go to code, the change detector ref class is written like this. It's an abstract class. Means you cannot create object of it. You have to extend it to use it. And it has only these methods. We'll talk about those methods later. And further, when you go there, you'll see there's another class called viewRef, which extends change detector ref. So I'm able to do change detector d equal to new viewRef. And the component and everything is part of. So this viewRef class is a big class. It has all the, it has everything which is required to make sure that your data model and your uh, data on the DOM, uh, that rendering on the DOM are in sync with each other. And viewRef class has other purposes as well. Now, it's, as, a, as a developer, you really don't need to get there. I just wanted to show you this. As a developer, when I go to uh, demo, you'll understand that how we can use change detector in our application uh, for uh, betterment. Okay, now how change detector works, this is very important. In your, Angular, in your Angular application, you have component tree. Like you can have an app component, then app child one component, then app child one two component, then app child two component, app child two one component, and it makes a change, it makes a tree. So a whole Angular application is actually a component tree. And what it does, a change detector runs from top to bottom in different branches of component tree. So change detector actually you can see that this CD, the leftmost CD as a, root, uh, as a root component, then the child component, child component, and further. Okay? Now, let us say in the bottom of a child component, you ran an event. So there's a component right bottom. You click the button there. What it will do, it will go to the root component again and start running change detector again. Because it needs to make sure that everywhere data model and your DOM is in sync with each other. And then it will propagate like this. Make sense? Again, these are theory. Uh, I'm just, I just wanted to show you. Now, when change detector runs, one is that change detector runs its own, like in the case it is running. Whenever Angular thinks it runs, how it runs, they have different. Uh, it just runs to make sure uh, that your uh, uh, DOM and data model is in sync with each other. However, if these th one of these three conditions happen, change det detector will definitely run. So if you raise an event on template, like clicked on a, you click on a button, or you, uh, or, uh, you submit a form, when you perform these tasks, an event gets raised. In that case, change detector will definitely run. When you are making an API call, when you are making an XHR call, Whenever data is back, your change detector will definitely run. And if you are using asynchronous JavaScript functions, such as set timeout, same time interval, your change detector will 
definitely run. Now, this is clear, this point, this is important. Forget about previous slides, this is very important. You understand when change detector runs? If one of these three will happen. Now, if I go and show you the code which I, uh, which I wrote here, in this code, if you look at here and go to app.component.ts, And right here, okay, if you see this code, state interval, can you see that inside ng unit? Is the asynchronous JavaScript function the third option there in my slide? And since this function is, is being executed each one second, that's why change detector, I'm requesting Angular to run change detector after each second, and, since, and whenever it runs, it makes sure that data and uh, DOM are in sync with each other. Okay, now let us see some demo on this. Be with me, uh, and uh, you'll understand that. So what I have done in my code, I have created a child component. There's another component, I have given it a name as a, as a child component. Right now, if you see this component has nothing. Okay, and what I'm going to do, with your permission, can, uh, just to save time, can I just uh, copy paste a little bit of code? And I'll walk through? Because anyway, I'm not able to see that. See, I was not even able to change the theme, so. Better would be, uh, let's not waste time of each other. So what I'm going to do on my app.component.ts, okay, let me uh, get rid of this. I don't want that now. And uh, I have created, a, I have created a, a property called data. The whole purpose what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass this data from parent component to child component, and then we'll explore that how change detection works in that uh, scenario. So here is data, and in ng on in it, is it uh, visible from the back, ng on init function? Yes, so in ng on init, I'll just say that, hey, this dot data equal to, Give me a counter, zero. So when you uh, create a, when you, when you create a um, object like this, I just created an object, this dot data counter zero. In JavaScript or TypeScript, when you create an object like this, this is called object as a zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'll take this data and pass it to the chat component, and then we'll see how change detector works. Stop. So you saw that in the change detector class we had 
different functions like mark for change and all that. Using that, you can manipulate. You can change the default behavior. So this is how default behavior is. Okay. Here I have created that uh, this dot data counter equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do, here I have a function, I'm going to create a function called increment and in this function, what I'm doing, I'm incrementing the value of, uh, I'm incrementing the value of the data. So I have an ng on init, just initializing that and incrementing that. Now in the HTML, I'll go to app.component.html, okay? And in this, I have this code, button click, I'll call that function increment, and then I'm, I have, I'm using something called app child, and in, inside that I'm passing data. And if you don't know what we are doing in, in, in this line, this is the way you pass data to a property which is decorated with input decorator in the child component. For that you can learn more about component communication. Right now uh, we have created this app child component which is known by app child here. So let me call it just app child. And in this app child, what I got to do, I'm creating a property and decorating that with data. What does it mean that value of this property would come from the parent component? If you create a property and decorate that with input decorator for someone who does not know it. And here, in the template, what I'm doing, I'm just displaying data.counter. Simple code. And right now, if you go and where I have extra braces, Okay. Compile successfully, then can someone tell me what is the error? Oh God, wait. Uh, so it is saying that it is not able to find what is app child component, okay? And for that, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and uh, rerun this. Because I changed the template name, uh, I changed the selector name. Okay, once again, what I have done here is that I'm just passing the data from parent component to child component. And one thing you may want to see here is that uh, I'm setting change detection strategy to default. 
This is, if you don't set this, this is a default uh, change detection strategy. You have two types of change detection strategy. By default is the default. What does it mean that any time data is changing, you are, not, you, are not, like, you are not instructing anything to Angular to do anything for you. If data is getting mutated, or data is changing anywhere, uh, uh, Angular is going to, going to run change, det change detector whenever it wants to. So change detector, if you have put change detection strategy to default, change detector is going to run for this particular component in a default way. You, are, you have not instructed anything to Angular, change anything for, anything for you. Okay, so here it is. Okay, and this is, this is the output you are getting. Item zero, and if I click on this, very simple. So what's happening? That from the parent component, you are passing the data. It's going to the child component. Now, when you click on this button, increment, where do you, where you are increasing the value of counter? Anyone? In the? No, when I click on this increment, it is calling which function? Where, where that function is written? Parent component? Yes, everyone? So you have the app component? Inside that you have the app, ch app child component. You are creating the component tree. We performed an event uh, on the parent component and that is causing uh, child component change detector to run. That's what I meant by that component tree. Because if change detector does not run, does not run, you will not get the updated value. Everyone got this idea? Now, so this is a default behavior, like if data changes, change detector is running perfectly for you. Okay? Now there is a problem in this approach. See some, yes, uh, question? No. So see some real-time problem. Assume that you are sending 100,000 data in a component, or like 10,000 data in a component. Now any of that data changes, it is going to run change detector for you. And it will not only change detector for, run change detector for that component, it will run change detector for every component which is, which is uh, you know, as the child component of that component. So as he rightly said, that it may, it may cause uh, some performance issue. You may, you may want to control that, hey, when you want to run a change detector. Okay? So for that, you can go here and say that, that hey, don't run change detector for me by default, Instead of this, run it on push. Now, what does it mean? On push means there's only two change detection strategy. Ch uh, default is that your change detector will run in a default way. If any of those three events happens, change detector is going to run. Now, when you, when you set it to on push, what does it mean that your change detector will only run for this component and every component inside it if you pass new reference of the data to this component. I repeat, when you pass new reference of the data, right now, if you go to increment function here, right now if you go to increment function, you are not creating a new, in, new uh, reference. You are just incrementing the, like you are incrementing the value in the same reference. And it is, making sure that change detector does not run. So if, we, if I go here and in the component.ts, and there's a lifecycle hook, ng on changes, it runs whenever data changes on that particular uh, component. It, it, uh, at least it will run once if you have an input decorator property, it is going to run once. Now can someone tell me that, how many of you are aware of lifecycle hook? Anyone? Okay, so let me explain you that very, uh, very quickly. Uh, Lifecycle hook is nothing but set of functions which gets executed in a certain sequence in the life cycle of the component. Now what is life cycle of the component? Component will get first initialized, component and at the last component will be destroyed. In between component has many lives, many stages like whether the data you are passing is being changed or not, whether change detector runs or not, whether the data which is already rendered has been changed, and all those scenarios. So considering all those scenarios, there are certain lifecycle hooks on a component. 
Make sense? And they run in a certain sequence. You can go and learn more about that. Few of them are ng on init. ng on init is very popular because ng on init runs only once and it runs when your component is getting initialized. So let us say if you want to bring data from the server, you should write that code inside ng on init that you need that data before your component gets initialized. So that is ng on init. In the same way, you have something called ng on changes. What ng on changes is that if, if in your component, there is a property which has input decorator. If in your component, you have a property which has input decorator, it means that data is going to come from outside that component. So if data of that component changes, ng on changes runs. Make sense? Now, the, now which lifecycle hook runs uh, first? ng on init or ng on changes? If you don't have input decorator in your component, then always uh, ng on init will run first. But if you have an input decorator in your application, then ng on changes will run and then after ng on init will run. And again, ng on changes runs, uh, ng on init runs only once. However, ng on changes runs as many times as data is being changed. Okay, everyone? Again, ng on changes will not run if change detector is not detecting the change data. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have here ng on changes. Here I'll say console.log, this dot data, we have a this dot data here. So keep in mind, first time ng on changes will run because input data is being passed that counter value zero is passed. And if I go here right now and refresh it, okay, and I'm incrementing the value, you see nothing is happening because I'm not passing the new reference. And our change detection strategy is set to on push. It means change detector is not running. It means the person who is responsible to make sure your data and DOM is in sync is on leave for this particular component. And if I press F12 here, you see I have an object here. This object, that object is that this dot data. And if I go there, can you see the value there? What is the value? So I wanted to show you that you have the updated data there. But it is not being displayed on your template. Why? Because change detector is not running. Now there's a two way to solve it, right? Everyone? The first way to solve it is go and change it to default. <laughs> Why do you take so much pain? Or second way to solve it is we can manually run change detector. Okay, and to run change detector manually, uh, I hope I'm making sense here, you are getting it. I'm going very slow on purpose. So whatever demo I had, I'm, I have trimmed them down. Just to, so even if you are able to take what is change detector uh, and how manually you can invoke it, that is success for all of us. Because most of you even don't understand what is lifecycle hook. Right? So what, what I'm trying to show you that what is exactly change detector here. Now in our slide, you remember, if I go to my slide, uh, in our slide, uh, we had one, uh, this particular slide. And I told you that if you want to manually invoke change detector, you have to inject it. So this is the way you'll inject it. So let us go and inject it in our uh, child component because we want to execute it manually there. So we'll go to our child component here and say private CD and then change detectors ref and make sure that you import it from angular.core 
it is should be imported from angular.co not from the src or something now what i can do my friend i'm not going to do right now i'll do later but now i can go anywhere and say that hey this dot cd dot detect changes and it will detect changes i'll come to that later but i'm going to give one book to whoever is even not almost correct even 50% correct answer is there i told you one way is that i can go and manually run change detector like this forget this option second is that you go and uh, change uh, mm, it to default strategy of course we don't want to do that what is the third way we can do that there are two ways is there are two ways we can we can run change detector and we can get the updated data just you may raise your hand in the life cycle hook no no nothing would happen in life cycle hook pass new reference that's a correct answer one correct answer yeah but i don't want to do that i'm telling you that okay we are not passing new reference then how we can do that sorry mac no i don't want to use cd i don't want to use cd okay i don't want to create new reference come on that was answer in the in the slide sorry was that I, I just what i'm saying i don't want to run that i don't want to use this ocd yes mm -hmm. oh that is again uh, like we can do that but that's again the tds thing very simple my friend answer is here if i go this and show you this you remember i told you that doesn't matter what is there but one of these will happen then change it or run whether it's on push or default doesn't matter these three have the highest priority if i am able to do one of these on the child component my change it or run yes so the simplest way to do that here is my child component and in the child component let me go there on the top this is my child component and let me go here and say that hey button refresh and here click so click is the one option is an event which will make sure that change detector runs time is up so zero i can i can like it does not take any uh, uh, empty things i'm just passing zero like i don't have any function to show you that uh, actually we are not calling any function in the back we are just raging the event i'll take like 5 minutes more is it okay so if i go now and you have the refresh button uh, let us go ahead and first close this we increment in some value was it not fun now you might have seen that why in many application you might have seen on the top refresh grid button because they don't want to pass new reference and they don't want to grid to refresh each time any data is changing anywhere because maybe you are uh, showing like 100000 rows data in a grid if each time change detector is running for any data is changing somewhere performance would be impacted right so this question might have come to you that hey so such a nice space why grid is not getting uh, refreshed automatically why they have to put a button there because by just putting one button they have improved performance a lot make sense everyone so this is clear to you nothing fancy about it okay now of course the one way to do is that i can go here in the app.component.ts and instead of this dot data thing i can say this dot the i can go and create a new object just a minute so if if that doesn't like if we have the on push counter will not work 
So here we can go and say that, hey, this dot data is equal to new object counter and maybe plus plus this dot data dot counter. In this case, what happening? We are creating a new object. Okay, everyone? And if I uh, go and run this, I have their increment. You see it is increasing, incrementing, and if you go to function F12, now you see as many times you change this, uh, change it, uh, that ng on changes is being run there. So you can read that and you can do that. I'll, I'll leave, you, leave you with a few thoughts. I, I hope now the basic of change detector is clear to you. Okay, today we have not covered uh, that how manually you can run it, but if you really want it, I'm here, I can show you demo offline to showcase that how you can uh, manually uh, run it. Change detector, again my friend, I'm a teacher. I believe that some, some technical jargon are unnecessarily people talk so much about it that it comes to us that it is very complex topic. But actually that is very easy topic. You, you learn change detector, this is it. There's two detection strategy, push or default. If you need to pass new reference, use push. Now, everyone heard about RxJs? Okay? So quickly, in RxJs, right now I am passing the raw object. I'm creating a new object and passing it, right? So since a new reference is there, then uh, automatically uh, change detector will run. But if I wrap that object inside RxJ subject or behavior subject, what would happen? New data will come, like whenever there is a new data, it will send me, uh, I can subscribe to the new value. But behavior subject or subject does not create new object. So in that case, you have the new value, but new object is not there, means your application will again not run change detector. And in the dot subscribe, you can run your change detector manually. So this is it, uh, everyone. Uh, demo we have covered. Thank you so much. I hope you find it useful. My name is Dhananjay Kumar. Um, and you can reach me for any training and consulting at debugmode.outlook.com. Thank you so much.